I'm Kara Kaczynski, the Pocket Occupational Therapist, and we're here in Dallas, Texas at the Future Horizons Autism Super Conference. So the book is the Special Needs School Survival Guide, and it's everything you wanted to know about school. It is, okay, so it starts out with just di different diagnoses that you might see, and then um, I explain them in clear terms, no technical jargon. And then each little diagnosis area has about, I don't know, 50 to 100 activities that you can do at home or at school or cheaply and effectively. So it's just full of information that you can use right now. And the cool thing about it is at the end of every chapter are resources that you can use and access in the internet from a computer. And it's, um, it's not just for kids with any diagnosis either. It's for kids that are just having trouble with handwriting or with dressing in school or transitions too. Well, both of my kids are on the autism spectrum, so it's important to me that when I learn something for other people, you know, as I research it for occupational therapy, I want to try it at home. So then I take what works and I put it in a book and what doesn't work, it's thrown out the window. Uh, and the other thing is I've just started to research for webinars because our kids as, you know, if our kids are aging. So they start out these cute little babies with autism and now they're getting to be teenagers and young adults and we need help with modifying the environment for them, transition planning, and especially for IEP goal writing for functional things that they can work on, not just handwriting, but then going beyond into the transition to young adulthood. Yeah, the misnomer at this point in the school systems is that we just do handwriting. So that's, we are actually not handwriting teachers. We can modify or help rectify a grip that's inefficient. So if a child doesn't have that nice, pretty little tripod grasp, we can help to get that. However, when it, the kid's in second or third grade, then we look at efficiency. So if the grasp is, is efficient, if it's a quadrupod grasp, or if it's some kind of funky grasp, and the child can write efficiently, then we leave it alone. But if not, then we go to um, electronic accommodations. So OTs then can look at keyboarding and what kinds of keyboards would fit the student best. Also sensory processing, as the kids get older, it looks different. So we can look at sensory processing as it relates to function in the school. And then we also can look at behavior and transition planning. Um, other things we can do is work on seating. So if the child's having trouble sitting still in the classroom, we can modify that too. So not just handwriting, not just sensory, but we look at behavior, transitions, so anything that affects that student's school day. Right, so that's a really good question because sensory processing disorder did not make it into the last DSM, which is the way that medical professionals classify disorders. So it did make it into the classification under autism, but sensory processing disorder is very confusing and a lot of treat, uh, therapists treat it differently. So the general overview is that sensory processing is either a heightened response to stimuli in the environment or a too low, which is hypo response. So if the student perceives every noise around them is equally as important or every feeling so I'm sitting here I can feel the chair my sweater the noise around me then it's hard to concentrate and focus in the classroom on what you're supposed to be paying attention to so we would use something maybe a suggestion could be a weighted uh, lap pad or some kind of fidget tool tool for the student to fidget with or we can even look at special positioning in the classroom so preferred seating then with sensory transitions can be hard because any unexpected bump in the classroom can or in line can set the child off into a fight or flight which is when they really have a tantrum and freak out so when they're in a fight or flight mode they may fly off the handle for no apparent reason maybe just being bumped by another student so it's our job to be detectives and to figure out why the student is having that meltdown So my CDs were created for my own kids who, my son in kindergarten didn't like the fire drills so he was afraid to even step foot into the classroom because the fire alarm may sound. Of course the school's not going to say, oh let's just set up the fire alarm for your son Bob. You know, so we thought where can we get a fire alarm? So we went into a uh, recording studio and picked 
a whole plethora of sounds that you couldn't control, fireworks, thunder, sirens, and we put them on a CD and I wrote uh, nursery rhymes, changing the words to blender, blender, it's okay, or um, you know, diff different little, Mary had a little lamb is, you know, something to do with thunder. So they're kind of fun and that way the student can control the volume of the sound. It's not a listening therapy, there's no headphones involved. It's just a fun way to control sounds that you normally couldn't control. So they're for sale at my website, thepocketot.com.